In this video, we are going to check out the fantastic game played in round eight, the crucial game to determine the tournament winner of the Prague Chess Festival. It's Nodibek Abdusotorov, who is having five points after seven rounds, and he's playing with the white pieces against Parham Marsoglu, and Marsoglu is only half a point behind, so he is in a must-win situation. Let's have a look at this fantastic fight, a real fight. Remember, a few years ago, we had this discussion that classical chess is dead, well, watch this game and it will prove you totally wrong. Here we go. Abdul Satorov goes for the move e4, c5, knight f3, d6. We have the Sicilian opening and Marsoglu, of course, goes for the move a6. It's the Sicilian Nidorf variation. And Abdul Satorov replies here with the move h3. e5, attacking the knight on d4. The knight goes back to b3. Bishop e7, bishop e3. Bishop e6, and here Abdul Satorov played the move queen f3. Interesting idea. So the queen retains control over the d5 square and, of course, also prepares castling queenside. Knight bd7, and white played here the move g4 with the idea to kick the knight from f6 away. Therefore, Marsoglu goes here for the move h6, and castling queenside is indeed played. Rook to c8. And now the knight comes into d5. So far, we are still following some uh, theory. And it's, of course, important to realize that this knight on d5 cannot be taken. If you take with the knight after pawn takes back, the bishop on e6 is just trapped. So that is not possible. You may take with the bishop on d5 instead, but after e takes d5, white is having great prospects here with ideas to get a bishop involved and later on try to expand on the king side. So... Here we see white is having a very nice grip on the d5 square. But what should black do? Well, look at this. This is fascinating. Black is going to play around that d5 square. And here the move knight f8 is played. This may look strange and it looks as if white is just having a very nice grip on the center. But things are far from simple. Because after bishop d3, the knight comes over to g6 and black is trying to control these dark squares. Rook h2 e1 and here the move knight d7 is played. So what is black trying to do? Well, avoiding the exchange of knights first of all and after the move king b1 the idea is indeed to play bishop g5. Very thematical idea. Black is intending to trade off its bad bishop for the bishop on e3 and by doing so you're also trying to increase your influence on the dark squares on the king side. Well, white played here the move c4, white castled, sorry, black castled, and now the bishop went back to f1. So the reason is to open up the d-file so that the rook is indirectly eyeing that pawn on d6. Well, knight to h4, played, attacking the queen. And here, interesting moment, bishop takes g5, played in the game. There are some possibilities. You can, of course, recapture with the pawn, with the queen, you can even take with the knight on h4 first on f3. That's actually not such a great idea after bishop takes d8. It's important that you cannot take the rook on e1 because it runs into knight e7 with check and everything is hanging and white is uh, doing great. I mean, there are some other possibilities of uh, course black and for instance take first on uh, d5 to avoid that knight e7 check. But after pawn takes... It's uh, still not so clear. Uh, probably black should take back with the rook on uh, d8. And I think white after rook e3 has some chances to uh, put pressure against the uh, pawn on uh, b7. If you instead take on e1, well then you play here bishop e7 attacking the rook. Rook goes away. You take on d6. And white is having fantastic play for the exchange. So let's not get there. And Marsodlu just plays a much safer continuation. He just... Play the move, pawn takes uh, bishop. So h takes g5. The queen is still under threat and the queen goes to d3. Well, now we have a kind of positional battle. As you can see, white is controlling the d5 square. But in the long run, this bishop on f1 is not a great bishop because uh, all these pawns are placed on light square. So the question is whether the d5 square and also the backward pawn on d6, whether they're really weak or black can easily cope with that. Well, in the game, knight g6 was played. The knight comes back, 
more to the center. Knight to e3. So here you see white is intending to take the pawn on d6, but with the move rook to c6, everything remains perfectly defended. Queen to d2, played, and now b6. So here we see that uh, probably at some point black wants to advance the pawn to a5 and maybe play a4 to kick the knight away, put a knight on c5, and step by step you see that black is activating its forces. Knight to d5 back, a5 indeed played here, and white uh, doesn't want to uh, see this move a4 coming, therefore decides to play the move a4 himself, knight f4, the knight comes into the game. If you do exchange on f4, black of course has the possibility to take with the e-pawn so that the knight can come to, uh, to e5 and then you see the pawn on c4 will become a target. Well, anyway, white didn't capture, play the move rook e3, keeping everything well defended. Black, play g6, what is black trying to do? Well, the answer will follow very soon. Knight c3, and here a lot of possibilities, including plans of something like knight b8, knight a6, so that you do have two very nice squares on the queen side for your knight to go to. But Maxotlu goes for knight f6, also an interesting idea. f3 is played. Note that the pawn on c4 is never really hanging. If you do take, and are taking back with the bishop and then with the rook, well then the pawn on uh, d6 is hanging. So black is not going to take king h7. Maybe a little strange looking move in fact, because after the move knight d5 the king went to g7 anyway. But you look at this position and you see there's a really strategical battle going on. No immediate tactics, the tempo more or less doesn't really matter too much. But now look at this, h4 is played as white is trying to open up the king side. If you do take the pawn then white is going to take on f4, the rook will come back. And there are ideas here to uh, put a queen on c3 and maybe play e5. A lot of pressure against the uh, knight on f6 along the d-file. So that's something black doesn't really uh, fancy at, uh, at all. Instead, Maxotlu decided here to take with the bishop on d5. Pawn takes d5, hits the rook on c6, rook goes back to c8. Pawn takes g5 and now knight to h7. So you see... White is a pawn up, but not for long. The pawn will be won back. Bishop a6. The bishop comes in, hits the rook, rook to c7. And now we see that with this plan, white is trying to gain control over the open c file. So rook c1, rooks are coming off the board. Knight takes g5. And you see the knights are looking great, but also white is having clear chances on the queen side. With the queen coming in or rook coming to the c file, White is able to dictate the course of the game on that side of the board. Probably playing a move like rook c3 is the way to go. Trying to come in with your rook to uh, c6 at some point. But instead, there follow the move queen c6. Also interesting. But now, look at this. Knight g2. The knights are becoming quite an annoying factor to deal with. First, this knight hits the rook. Rook goes away. To c3, but now knight to e1. Interesting. Pawn on f3 is now attacked by both knights. Knight goes back to d2. The knight on b3 was out of play. Here it defends the pawn, has even ideas to come to c4. And black has two very interesting options. The first one was not played in the game. Queen f6. Just hitting the pawn on f3 one more time, giving up the pawn on b6, but after taking on f3 black's uh, queen side is falling apart but also white's king side is becoming quite vulnerable but this becomes very double-edged in the game instead maxotli went for rook h8 he's activating the rook very logical move rook e3 attacking the knight on e1 but the rook comes in to h2 it's ignoring the threat if you do take on e1 rook takes d2 the black rook is super active and the pawn on f3 is a serious weakness therefore nodibek abdusatov played knight back to f1 attacking the rook on um, on h2 and here again there are a lot of 
interesting options. In, in fact, even sacrificing the exchange is not silly at all. If you do take the pawn on f3 and white captures on h2, then more pawns are likely to drop uh, soon afterwards as, uh, as well. But look at this. Instead of taking on f3, knight c2 was played to attack the rook on e3. If you take on h2, knight takes e3, black looks to be in great shape. So rook c3 was played instead. And now knight, of course, is hanging, but the knight comes to b4, hits the queen, hits the bishop. But now what is happening here in this position? If the, if the queen goes away, maybe rook f2 and black is really nicely uh, fighting here. The knight on b4, it's a fantastic piece. It uh, makes sure that the king can't even go either to, uh, to the second rank. So anyway, look now. Move 40, critical moment in the game as white decides here to sacrifice the queen. With the move, knight takes h2, taking the rook. Black takes the queen, of course, what else to do? And white captures with the pawn and is now threatening to play c7, to attack the queen and then to promote the c pawn. So white has a very, very strong threat here. Knight e6 play to cover that uh, next square for the uh, c pawn and the knight will become a very important defender bishop c4 was played in the game and this is very important because if you do play something like queen c7 trying to activate the queen and try to wrap up the pawn then the key plan here is to eliminate that knight and after taking and taking back the knight from h2 will eventually reach the b5 square there's not much you can do against it, after which the queen is forced to leave the blockading square, the pawn can be pushed, and the pawn will be promoted soon after. So, black really has to deal with that, and the knight is a much better defender than the queen. The knight is on c7. Knight f1, queen e8, threatening to take the pawn on c6. But now it's bishop to d5. Bishop defends the pawn, but that gives black... The possibility to break free with the move b5. Very interesting idea. So the plan is that if you take on b5, the knight can take and eventually the knight can even come to d4. Not only to attack the pawn on c6, but also to join the attack against the white king. Very interesting, ambitious uh, play by, uh, by black. White didn't want to capture the pawn, didn't want to collaborate. Played here the move knight e3. Black captures the pawn on a4 now himself. And then the rook goes to c2. So the idea is that now knight b5 doesn't come with tempo. You can just push your pawn as, uh, as quickly as you, uh, as you can. Well, still a lot of interesting possibilities, including the activation of the queen via the h file. But queen b8 was played instead. Probably not the best move, but there are ideas for black to bring the queen via the b-file to a better position. Well, bishop c4 played, preventing the queen to uh, reach the b5 square. And now after the move a3, the knight comes in to d5. This is a very nice typical plan. You want to trade off that main defender. If black takes on d5, you take back with the bishop, you're threatening to push the pawn. And then the pawn will be promoted. Even if you block with the queen anytime, the bishop will come to b7 and the rook really nicely supports the pawn from behind. If you play queen c7, you take the pawn and then it's rook b2, rook b7 and so on. Maybe it's still holdable for black, but practically it's very unpleasant to, uh, to play. So instead of taking on d5, Mahsotlu keeps the knight on the board by going to e6. The knight retains control over the c7 square, but also has the plan to come in to d4. Now, things are heating up. What is going on here? White wanted to clarify the situation. He didn't like that uh, pressure against the pawn on uh, b2. Played here the move b3, but that is a shocking blunder. What can black do here? Well, Marcelo didn't see the best continuation. He should have gone here for this move. Queen a7 activating the queen and all of a sudden black is just winning this is difficult to see but let me show you some uh, some ideas for instance if you prevent that queen from coming in 
uh, by playing rook c1. The queen comes to f2, threatening checkmate. If you go back, you cannot just go back and forth with uh, the rook because then it's a2. With a check, you're deflecting the, um, the white king from keeping the uh, rook supported. So that's not possible. While after queen a7, if you play king a2, you cannot really maintain control over the second rank. It's knight d4 hitting the rook. And if you go away with the rook, the pawn on c6 is also hanging. Well, if you do play c7 with the idea that after knight takes c2, you get a new queen, it's queen d4 and nothing can be done against checkmate on b2. This is a fantastic idea. Why does a piece up? But absolutely helpless. Missed opportunity by Marceau de Wu. Instead played here the move knight d4 immediately attacking the rook and the pawn. But now it's c7 with an immediate threat against uh, the queen. The queen goes to h8. Razor sharp position. What is the queen going to do? Is the queen going to enter or should it retain control over the promotion square? Well, first things first, the rook on c2 is threatened to be taken. The rook should go away. And uh, for instance, something like rook f2, it's a mistake. It runs into queen h4 and you're not minding white promoting that, uh, that pawn because then you take the rook and there are mating threats once again. So the only move for the rook to go to is placing it on d2. Queen h1 check. King has to go to a2. And now it's queen to c1 threatening to take the rook. Rook goes away. And how is... Black ever going to prevent that C pawn from queening? Well, then it's A4. Amazing resource. If you do promote the C pawn, Black captures on B3. King can't go anywhere. If you take it with a bishop, the pawn, it's queen takes C8. Black is just winning. So the pawn cannot be promoted. But look at this. White played here to move G5. This pawn, of course, can never be taken by the queen. If you do take... And it's c8 queen and the mating threats are gone. So don't think about that. But this pawn on g5 is a super important pawn. And we will discover soon why. If you do take on b3, you take back with the bishop. And if you ever take with the knight, look at this insane idea. There is knight f6. And all of a sudden you're queen down. But white is just winning here. If you take the pawn, there is rook h7, king f8, rook h8. With check, king e7 is checkmate on e8. Fantastic mating idea. Here you see why this pawn should be on g5 to support a knight. And of course, also after king g7, it's rook to g8. So in all these lines, white is just winning. Even the attempt to give a number of checks here with queen a1, you just take the knight on b3. And later, the c pawn will be promoted. Anyway, this didn't happen. Black didn't capture on b3. But instead... Played the move, knight takes f3, hitting the rook on h2. If you promote the pawn now, it's knight takes h2. And once again, it's going to be checkmate on b2. Instead, white had to move the rook, played rook f2. Pawn takes b3, played. Bishop takes b3, and now knight d2. And still... Well, you've got to be very careful as, uh, as why. There are ideas now to give checkmate on, uh, on b2 or maybe even queen b1 could be an additional idea and then take the bishop. So only move for white is to take on d2, eliminate that attacker, giving up the rook. Queen takes d2, king takes a3. Black is having a queen versus two minor pieces. But all of a sudden there is this huge pawn on c7, which is very difficult to deal with. Well, what should black do? Stop the pawn. Only move here is queen c1 and then you try to set up a number of checks. If king goes back, then it's queen d2 again. Why is not making progress? Well, in case of something like, let's say, king to a4, you put the queen still on c5, but black is not able to make any progress here because the knight comes in to f6 this pawn can never be taken. If you do so, it's knight e8 with a knight fork. You're winning the queen. And if the queen is giving a check, well, king goes away, king, uh, queen b7, king a4. It's just a repetition of moves. This is what both sides have to accept. But Marsotlu played instead. Move queen to a5. But then 
it's bishop to a4. Now the bishop is also not only defending the king, but trying at some point to support the c pawn from getting promoted. If you, for instance, play queen c5, it's king b3. There are no good checks here. All the squares are nicely covered by the knight and the uh, bishop. And uh, if king tries to approach, well, it's not possible. Both squares are covered by these minor pieces. But bishop d7 will be played. And on the next move, the pawn will, be, uh, will become a queen. Instead, queen a6 was played, controlling the promotion square. But now king b4, you're getting out of the pin. Queen b7, and now just bishop to b5. Look at this queen. It's dominated by the two minor pieces and the c pawn. And apparently, if black is playing very precisely with a move like king f8, you're probably able to hold on because the bishop is not able to uh, come to... Um, uh, to d7. If you play king c4, preparing bishop d7, the queen will come to c8. And it's impossible for white to deflect the queen from the uh, promotion square. But instead, Marsodlu went here for the move king h7. Logical move, just to get away with the king. But it's king to c4. And all of a sudden, you have a big problem because the bishop will come to d7. Even if you try to defend against it, there is bishop d7. The bishop can't be taken because of knight f6. Here you see why the king is really badly placed on, uh, on h7. White is winning the queen. And if you go somewhere else with the queen, queen a6, king b4, king b7, uh, queen b7, king c3, the checks are over. And next move, the pawn will be promoted. Therefore, queen c8 is not possible. King g7 was played, but then anyway, it's bishop to d7. This is what happened in the game. Queen a6, uh, king to b3, queen b7. The king is walking away and the checks are over. Queen a6, white gets a new queen. Queen e2 check, king b3. And well, once again, the checks will be over very soon. Either the queen or the knight or both pieces, they can interfere anytime. Queen takes e4 was played. Final attempt, trying to get rid of the remaining pawns, but very cute finish here. Queen to g8, sacrificing the queen with the aim to simplify because black is now forced to take the queen. Then it's knight f6 with a knight fork. White is regaining the queen and black simply not able here to uh, trade off the uh, remaining pawn. The other pawns will be picked up very soon and white is just winning with this victory. Nodibek Abdusatorov succeeded in winning this tournament with one round uh, to go. He is already the tournament winner. Very impressive performance, but even more impressive is that he is gaining 15 rating points so far. There's one more round to play and that brings him to number four spot in the world. Leapfrogging uh, world champion Ding Li Ren, who's now currently number five. But... Who knows what Abdus Satorov is capable of. He has already become World Rapid Champion uh, once. He's only 19 years old. He seems to be one of the big uh, champions for the, for the future. Who knows? He is not able this year to play in the Candidates Tournament, but definitely he will get there at some point. Do you like this video? Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for doing that. And I will show you many more exciting games very soon.